Hello, this is Anand Paul and welcome back to Stat Pro VHI Advanced Training Series. In this session, we will learn how to calculate the modes and frequencies of a structure using eigenvalue extraction method in Stat Pro. We will consider the same building to demonstrate the modes and frequencies of a structure using eigenvalue extraction method in Stat Pro. Before showing how we employ the eigenvalue extraction method in Stat, let me give you a brief introduction about the eigenvalue extraction method. Modes and frequencies are calculated by modal extraction and is performed by solving the equation omega square mq minus kq equals zero, where m is the mass matrix assumed to be diagonal without coupling, and omega is the natural frequency or the eigenvalue. Q is a normalized mode shapes or eigenvector. In the eigenvalue extraction method, we have to specify all the masses in the building along with the directions they are capable of vibrating in. If the data is correctly provided, the program calculates as many modes as the user requests in the ascending order of strain energy. Now we will study all the commands one by one that are required to perform eigenvalue extraction in StatPro. The first command that we will deal with is the density command. It is one of the critical components of the frequency analysis. Since for a structure, the mass comes from the self-weight and the permanent or imposed loads in the building. To calculate self-weight, the density is required. And hence, we have to specify the density of the material that we are using, using the density command in constants. Since we have already applied the properties for the building and the material of the columns and beams as concrete, the Stat Pro will use the default value for densities. If you want to check the density value that we have provided, we will take a look at the Stat input file. Here you can see the density command, which has defined the density of the material as 23.56 kN per meter cube. In order to perform analysis, the next command that we have to provide is the cutoff mode shape command. To specify the cutoff mode shape command, you can find the command in commands, miscellaneous, cutoff mode shapes. Theoretically, a structure has as many modes of vibrations as the number of degrees of freedom in the model. In a large structure, the extraction can be a very time consuming process. Further, not all modes are of equal importance. One of the measure of importance of modes is the participation factor of that mode. In many cases, first few modes are sufficient to study the total dynamic response of the building. Unless specified, STAT calculates only the first six modes of a structure. As you can see, a default value of six has been displayed in the cutoff mode shape command. In the present example, we will use a cutoff mode shape of 10. So STAT will calculate 10 mode shapes since we have provided a cutoff mode shape command of 10. Click OK to add the command to the STAT file. The mathematical method that STAT uses to calculate the mode shapes is called the subspace iteration eigen extraction method. The method involves two matrices, the stiffness matrix and the mass matrix. The stiffness matrix K matrix is, is assembled using the data such as the member and element lengths, the member and element properties, the modulus of elasticity, the Poisson's ratio, the member release definitions, member offsets and support informations, etc. So the first three tabs, that is properties, specifications and support commands will help the stat pro to calculate the K part of the equation. Now for assembling the maze matrix called the M matrix, stat uses the load case definition that we have provided to calculate the model calculation. So the next step, what we have to do is to define the load cases. Before defining the load case, there are some important aspects that we have to bear in mind. That is, the input that we specified are in weights, not masses. Internally, STAT will convert the weights into masses by dividing the input by G or the acceleration due to gravity. If the structure is a plain frame structure, there are two possible directions of vibrations that is global X and global Y. If the structure is declared as a space frame, there are three possible directions that is global X, Y and Z and we have to specify the self-weight along the global x, y and z directions. And it is important that we have to always specify the absolute value of weights 
STAT is programmed to algebraically add the weights at the nodes. So if some weights are specified as positive numbers and others as negative, the total weight at the given node is algebraic sum of the weights in global directions at that node. To define the load cases, we will click on the load case details and click add. We will be having only a single load case for model extraction. Click on the load case and click add. Unlike rally frequency method, we will specify all the loads in a single load case. The first load will be a self-weight load with a factor of 1 in x direction and in y and z directions. Apart from this, we will specify flow loads of intensity 3 kN per meter square in global x, y and z directions with a y range of 0 to 16 since a range of 0 to 16 will cover. Apart from this, we will have to define a flow load of intensity 3 kN per meter square in global x direction for a y range of 0 to 16 and in global y direction and also in global z direction. Let us apply the self-weight command to the whole structure. Now you have provided stat the informations that are required to calculate the M matrix. To calculate the modal frequencies and mode shapes, modal calculation command has to be provided. To add the modal calculation command, click on the load case. In frequency definitions in the load items, select the modal calculation command and click add. This command will trigger the calculation of frequencies and modes for the load case in which the command is specified. And these loads are used in generating the M matrix. Frequencies and modes have to be calculated when dynamic analysis such as response spectrum or time history analysis are carried out. But in such analysis, the modal calculation requested command is not, is not explicitly required. In response spectrum and time history analysis, STAT will automatically carry out a frequency extraction without the help of modal command. Add the perform analysis command and click close. Now our structure is ready to be analyzed. We will go to analysis command and run analysis. We will check the output file. We can ignore this warning. To view the results, you can directly go to the Eigen Solution tab. Since we have provided a cutoff mode shape of 10, the STAR has calculated mode shapes up to 10 and it has displayed the frequency values and period the inverse of frequency along with the accuracy values. For further reference, STAR has calculated additional 6 mode shapes. We can see from the report that for vibration in Z direction, the first mode shape has a participation factor of 82.64% and for the second mode shape, there is a participation factor of 83.01% in X direction. Let us take a look at the values of periods for mode shapes 1 and 2. You may notice that the values calculated for X and Z directions are comparable with the values that were calculated using the Rayleigh method of extraction of frequency. The sum x, y and z columns shows the cumulative value of the participation of all modes up to and including that mode. Here you can see the summation value of 83. For the mode shape 5, the cumulative value has been calculated as 94.53 in x direction and 94. 0.19 in z direction. If our target value was 93%, we will have to consider mode shapes up to 5 to obtain the results. As per IS 1893, the number of modes to be used in dynamic analysis should be such that the sum of total modal masses of all modes considered is at least 90% of the total seismic mass. So in order to perform Response spectrum analysis as per IS1893, we will have to consider mode shapes up to 5. Another unique aspect of this result is that some mode shapes are having zero participation factors 
in x, y and z directions. This is caused by the fact that the vibration pattern of the model for that mode result in symmetrically located masses vibrating in the opposing directions, thus cancelling the other's effect. Torsional modes also exhibit this behavior. We will understand this effect when we check the mode shape graphically in the post processor. To select the post processing from the mode menu. This screen contains the facilities for graphically examining the shape of modes in static and animated views. The dynamics page is available on the left side of the screen for viewing the shapes of modes statically. So we'll go to the dynamics page and we'll select the mode. Here stat displays the first mode shape of the building which is predominant in the Z direction and on the right side the stat has displayed the table and you can see that for the first mode shapes the mass participation is around 82% in Z direction. Select the mode case 2 from the drop down menu here and you can see that this is a mode shape that is predominant in X direction generating a factor of 83% in X direction. If you want to take a look at the animated view of the mode shapes, you can click the animation command. We will specify the diagram type as mode and we will add a of frames of 45 with target FPS as 75. We will click apply and we will reduce the scale for mode shape to a value of 0.2. For the animated view of mode shape 1, we will select the mode shape 1 option and we will click apply. So you can see the animated pattern of mode shape 1. Let us take a look at the mode shape 3. You can see that this is a torsional mode shape and as I specified earlier, this mode shape is having a participation factor of 0 and from the mode pattern it is logically understood that the masses in both directions get cancelled each other which leads to a participation factor of zero. Again for mode shape 6 it is acting in equal and opposite direction which will create a participation factor of zero. We can check the mode shape from 0 to 10 in the post processing unit. So in this video we learned how to calculate the mode shapes and the modal frequencies of the structure. In the next video we will learn how to perform the response spectrum analysis. Thank you for watching the video. For more videos and updates subscribe to our channel online civil digital.